Listen, are your internal conversations not serving you, not helping you, not making you feel good about yourself? Well, here's what you need to do. First, I need you to really listen closely to the voices in your head. And when I say listen closely, I don't mean you're listening to believe in them further. I don't mean you're listening to to trust them even more. I'm saying you're listening so that you can understand who that voice sounds like. I like to call it, we have an inner critic and then we have our higher self, our intuition that speaks to us in our mind. The inner critic is directly connected to our ego. Our ego is our false sense of protection, our false sense of safety. But here's the catch. Our ego is shaped and molded by our parents, by our guardians, by friends, by people who we believed in when we were children, right? The people who we listened to most when we were children, the people who came to our rescue, or so they think they did, the people who came to our rescue when we were having an emotional situation and they said whatever they said to us, the people who we have shaped our beliefs after. A lot of times the voices in your head, most of the time, the voices in your head are not you. They are the voice of your mother, the voice of your father, the voice of your grandmother, the voice of your brother, your sister, that close friend, okay? I know for me personally, sometimes I look in the mirror and I judge my body. I judge my postpartum body sometimes. I'm like, ooh, I got a little extra fat here. These arms are a little juicy. But I know that is not me. I really know that's like the voice of my mother or the voice of my grandmother, okay? I remember just recently, about a year or two ago, I had posted a picture and some way, somehow my grandma seen it. And my grandma called me, she said, oh baby, uh, it's time for you to start uh, exercising or something. You wanna deal with that little weight around your belly right now. Cause once you get my age, child, it gets stubborn. That is what my grandmother called me and said when she saw a picture of me having a little extra weight around my waist. Now, she ain't new to this. She's been communicating in that way. She's been had this ideology. She's been had this type of mentality. So when I look at myself in the mirror and I'm judging the weight that I have and I'm, and I'm critical and criticizing my body and that inner critic is very vocal and very loud, it's so important for me to realize and for you to realize that that inner critic is not you. It is the voice of someone who who didn't really know how to love you, how to honor you, how to give you what you need. And because you were so young and impressionable when they said some of those things to you, you had no other choice but to believe it. And you believed those voices up until this point, so much so that now you believe, now you think that it is you. And you think that those voices are true. So we as human beings, I want y'all to understand that we as human beings are so fragmented in our thinking, in our minds, and this has been a source of protection. So even me having those thoughts about having extra weight, I'm having those thoughts as a false sense of protection so that I don't keep eating or so that I don't keep being lazy or so that I don't feel unattractive to my partner, or I don't feel unattractive in general. So I tell myself those things to make me go exercise, to make me eat healthier, okay? But overall, when we look at it and when we analyze our thinking overall from a holistic place, those thoughts are not healthy and those thoughts don't truly serve me. There's a way that I can go exercise. There's a way that I can feel sexy. There's a way that I can eat healthy without degrading myself. But I'm just telling y'all things that you experience as well. I'm fortunate enough to be able to recognize that those voices are not my own and I don't have to believe it. Okay? So if you have voices in your head, if you have, you know, if you're hearing things in your mind that, that are not conducive to your growth, to your evolution, to your self-love, to your self-worth, to your self-value, I want to challenge you to ask yourself whose voice is it? And in order to really determine whose voice it is, you need to look at the tone. You need to look at the quality. You need to look at the, you need to look at how it sounds how that voice strings words together. 
Because more than likely, it is somebody who you've trusted. Somebody who you love. Somebody who loves you, but just don't know the impact of their words. Don't know the impact of their actions on your young, impressionable mind when you were a child. Okay? So the powerful thing is that once you realize and make the connection with whose voice it is and you realize it's not your own, then you can stop believing it. Then you can stop living your life from a place as if those voices are true, okay? Then you can start understanding and, and really speaking to that voice and talking back to that voice with compassion and with understanding and with empathy, okay? So that that voice can be quieted. And so that that voice can transform into a voice that does serve you. Alright? Peace.